to Regimental's YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to be um, doing a tutorial on how to build a mannequin. So the mannequin uh, I'm building is going to be an SS soldier. And I'm basically just going to show you and give you tips on um, how to dress it uh, and how to style it and uh, basically show you from start to finish how we build our mannequins. So we start with an unboxing of the mannequin. Here is the box, I've not opened it yet, and um, this is a mannequin which has come from a company in Holland called Europe Mannequins, uh, www.europemannequin.com. They specialize in mannequins for collectors, so they're usually quite small size, not too tall, have small size heads, and not too broad in the shoulders. Um, I haven't opened it yet, so um, I can't quite remember what position this one's standing in. We will find out as we go along. As you see on top here are some tools that you generally need for building mannequins. Um, things like a saw. Uh, this is moth uh, protection paper to stop your mannequin from getting any moth damage. Uh, blades, knives, um, scissors, screwdriver, screws. You'll see all what that is for um, as we go along. Um, I've got with me today a friend, um, Dave, who's going to help me build the mannequin. And on the right here, you'll see some of the parts of the uniform that we are going to use to put, put on it. Um, so uh, next we will start with the unboxing. Okay, so we're going to get this one out of the box. As you can see, it's... Uh, quite well wrapped, it's all protected. So we start by getting all the body parts out individually and we'll lay them all out on the floor so we have an arm. Okay, so you'll see here, the um, mannequin does come with feet and legs, but we will not be using those and I'll show you why as we go on. So as you can see, the, the head comes um, packaged so with lots of protection around the, the, the nose so it doesn't get damaged as you open it. Um, you can tell here straight away how narrow the body is so it's designed to fit World War II um, uniforms. And you can see the detail on the hands, just uh, looking at it from here, what good quality the hands are. Um, and if you take the face off, you can see some more detail of the face, it's a very good quality mannequin looks like a soldier so it's basically that it's designed exactly for what we're using it for so the first thing you do when you're uh, choosing to build a mannequin the first thing is very important most people have um, a piece of headdress that they've got in mind for their mannequin well you can't start building your mannequin until you've checked that the head size of your helmet or your hat fits on the head now I've not tried this yet this is the first time I'm doing it I've got a feeling the helmet's going to be a bit big um, but I'm going to put it on to see how it fits. Okay, now it does look a bit big. Um, options are I can pad it out a bit to make, make it fit better or I can choose a different type of headdress at this point. Uh, my backup plan is um, an SS side cap, which I have here, um, which I will be using if I feel like the helmet is too big. But that's, that's the first tip is always make sure your head size fits your headdress. So now that I've checked the headdress, the first thing I'm gonna do is start to put the mannequin together and put the trousers on. The trousers that I'm putting on there are a mint pair of SS dot pattern trousers. So you've gotta first of all, get the trousers on as if you're getting dressed yourself. Okay, so trousers are in position. The next thing I would do is get the body on. So, body goes on. It's the mannequin fittings are quite self-explanatory. They're not hard to do. Sometimes that can be a little bit fiddly. But once you've done one, you know what you're doing. There you go, snap fix, twist. Okay, so body and legs are attached. These pair of trousers have a set of braces, which makes life a lot easier. Um, I think what I might do first though, is I might get his shirt in place um, and then have his braces coming over his shirt. So, 
what I would do is I would just place the the shirt because most times when you've got a tunic or a jacket or a smock you you know it's nice to put something underneath the jacket so you have something in place so I'm choosing to dress this one in kind of a, a tropical look and then attach the braces over the shoulders now usually trousers don't come with braces and what I've had to do in the past is use string or wire in a cross hatch pattern hooked onto the button fixings to make sure the trousers actually stay up because you're never really gonna get your trousers to fit around the waist of your mannequin. It's just it's highly unlikely it's gonna happen. So the best tip is, is use string strapped across the shoulders, attach the button fittings or wire to hold the trousers up. Okay, so now we turn around and we're gonna start on the feet. For the, for the bottom end of the mannequin, what I need here is a pair of army issue socks I've got a pair of ankle boots. These are standard um, ankle boots, but these are Waffen um, SS stamp. There's a stamping there on the bottom of the boots to show that they're SS boots. And the other thing you might need is um, some foam or some uh, newspaper to pad out the inside of your boots. Now, I don't have to do it on this pair because the feet come uh, separately. But on some mannequins, um, you have fixed feet attached to the legs and it's virtually impossible to get boots on. Ankle boots, not so hard, not so bad, but jack boots or any high boots, you just cannot position uh, your mannequin to get into the boot. You know, when you're putting on a pair of boots yourself, you angle your foot down and you slide into them. On a mannequin, you've got a stiff, a stiff leg with a stiff ankle and foot, you can't position it in. So that's why I have the saw here, because nine times out of 10, what you have to do is saw off the toes of your mannequin or sometimes um, most of the foot of your mannequin um, to allow easy access for your mannequin to fit into the boot. Uh, that's why you need some, some tissue paper to help uh, le level it out with a bit of stability inside the boot. So I'm just gonna do that now um, and I'll show you when the ankle boots are ready to go on. Right, okay, so my boots are now padded out on the inside. I'm gonna get my socks in place and then I'm gonna try and fit the boots um, on and stand them up and we'll see how we get on, because sometimes they do need uh, a little bit of uh, stabilising. <laughs> okay, so the boots are now on. The laces are tied. You can see they're pretty sturdy. Um, I've left the socks up like this for now because I just want to talk about the laces. Most ankle boots that you buy from military dealers, they, they usually don't come with laces or they've got some kind of replacement laces or laces that are worn away. What I find the best thing to do is just go down to your local shoe, shoe repair place and buy a pair of leather um, laces. Um, this time I bought tan because the boots are kind of brown. They, look, they do look new, you can sometimes age them up um, by just kind of like dragging them through a bit of dirt or grease or something to make them match in. But you know, um, you, these won't really be noticed and these boots are quite new, so I've left them as they are. Um, but I just wanted to show you what I do next um, to hide some of the laces is basically, then you, all you do is you tuck the laces up there so they're out of the way, you don't see any of that part. And then you fold the boot, the, the sock over nicely, just over the laces there. So you can see the three stripes um, on, on the boot, on the socks. It just makes it nice and neat. Okay, so next comes the part where we try and stand the mannequin up, which I'll need uh, Dave's help for, um, because you know you always run the risk of it toppling over. Okay, so now the task is to get the mannequin stood up. You can do this on your own. You don't always need someone here to help you, but it's just gonna be easier for me to, to concentrate on talking while someone holds the mannequin for me. So make sure you support his feet, just in case you haven't put the shoes on properly. When you lift it up, um, we're going to put it up against the wall over here. And as you can see, well, you can't, probably can't see in, in the camera shot, but the, the feet are nice and sturdy. He's not going anywhere. And the braces are nicely holding the trousers up. Everything has worked out perfectly. So I'm not going to do up the, the shirt anymore yet because I've got to get the arms on. Um, before I get the arms on, my next thing to do will start to get the, the jacket into place. So I'm just going to grab the jacket from the floor here. Okay, and here we have a dot pattern SS four, pot and, uh, four pocket jacket. And what you do is you slip it into place 
and you know you just double check to make sure there's enough give in the jacket it's not going to be too tight on the shoulders as i said at the start of the video sometimes the mannequins if you don't get a, uh, a, spe a specific um, mannequin for world war ii or world war one uniforms the shoulders can be quite broad so what you would do next is you would get the arms and get them to get into place so dave if you can just hold that side uh, there's two ways of doing it one is up the sleeve but as you can see the, the bicep or the shoulder area is quite big so the easiest thing to do is to open the, the buttons on the shirt as much as you can and get the arm into the jacket through the shirt So amazingly, as you can see, um, we've got the, the jacket on with the shirt all nice and neat. Haven't done the hands yet. But what's amazing about it is that I've obviously done the boots extremely well because he's just standing up on his own. There's no um, string, there's nothing attaching it in place. He is just freestanding on his own. Okay, so now we're just gonna attach the hands. If you give me one hand, you do the other. So if you hold him first while I do one hand, Dave, you hold yeah. him otherwise. Uh, Riding might topple, so slide the sleeves up. And the next thing to do will be to um, get the belt on. Now, usually on a belt, you have lots of accoutrements and you can choose a selection of things to put on there. But what I always like to do first is put the belt on alone just to get the size measurements so I know where to fit the buckle before I start loading it full of, full of kit. Sometimes as well, people put wire straps on. Um, I've got wire straps on some mannequins, but this one I'm not gonna have any wire straps on. I'm just gonna um, have the belt with the equipment on the belt. Okay, so here's the belt, SS, Wolfen SS belt. Um, first things first, I've not checked the size at all. We're gonna have a dummy run just to see how it fits. Okay, looks to be perfect fit. I don't even have to adjust it. That's, that's more luck than judgment. Nine times out of 10, you have to adjust the just the size of the belt. So here are the accoutrements that I'm um, thinking about putting on the mannequin. I can't really decide what to put on there. Um, I think I'm gonna go for the MP40 pouch and the Luger holster, and then possibly have him holding um, one of the Zelt bands under his arm because they don't fit too well on the belt. If you put it at the back of your uniform, um, how they would have been worn on the back of the mannequin, you just, you don't see it. Um, no one ever sees it, it's no point having it. Um, so I think I might have him um, have it rolled up under one of his arms, just so we can see the camouflage pattern here. I've got some equipment loops if I need to do any strapping. Um, so I'm gonna start loading up the belt now. Okay, so I wanna get the MP40 pouch on. So if I unhook the belt, um, the easiest thing for me to do is to take the buckle off on this side. Leave the buckle there. The MP40 pouch ready. Now the other way to do this is to take the belt completely off and load it up and then try and refit the belt with all the stuff on it. I just find it easier to keep the belt in position um, and load it as you go. So that's there. That's done, that side. Now I'm just gonna push him back against the wall so he doesn't move anywhere. And get the holster for the other side. Hopefully that will stay. If not, you can always improvise. Use my karate techniques to hold it in place and get the holster ready on the other side. And then all you gotta do is once they're on, jiggle them around a bit to find the position that you want. Okay, so as I said, um, attaching the Zelt bar to the back of the uh, mannequin is an option, but you don't get to see it. So what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and have my guy carrying his Zelt bar under his arm. So there's a gap, just about big enough, and he's there ready to set up his Zelt bar and you get to see the camouflage. 
Okay, next thing to do is to secure the mannequin to the wall. Um, I have um, old barn um, wooden slats on my wall here, so it's quite easy for me to stick a screw on, have some fishing wire or some string to hold him in place to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Okay, so the uh, final thing we have to do is choose which headdress we're gonna use. Um, as you can see, he's all standing there in position. He doesn't have a gun yet. I, I still need to get a, an MP40 for him. But he's holding his belt bar under his arm and we need to choose whether we're gonna have the helmet, which looks okay, slightly too big, I think, um, but he does look quite good. Or are we gonna use the overseas cap? He's just gonna go on his head there. Which one do you prefer, the helmet or the side cap? Make a comment below which one you prefer. So that completes our tutorial on how to build a mannequin. Hopefully the tips there on um, checking the head size of your headdress against the helmet, um, reinforcing the feet, using string um, to hold the trousers up, um, making sure you have a proper mannequin for uniforms rather than a commercial high street mannequin. They're all good tips to use. Um, once your mannequin's built, you can do things like um, features on their face. If you're really good at uh, art, art, you can touch up their face with some battle damage or some dirt to make them look like they're in the, in the, in the field. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it and we will look forward to our next video, which will probably be um, in about uh, 10 days time. We're going to do a special video about um, Alak porcelain. So um, don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you are not already subscribed. We will be doing another update on our website www.regimentals.co.uk in about a week's time. Um, so yeah, don't forget, smash that like button. <laughs>